AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Here are today's top headlines. Daimler expects to pose big losses. Toyota plans to reorganize its North American operations. And more news from the New York Auto Show. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Wednesday, April 8, 2009, and now the news. Daimler expects to post a big loss for the first quarter and is initiating across-the-board cost-cutting, the company announced today. Sales of Mercedes-Benz cars dropped 25%, and sales of commercial trucks have ground to a halt. Daimler is going to cut its labor costs by 2 billion euros this year, which has its union, IG Metall, up in arms. The Wall Street Journal reports that company CEO Dieter Zetsche says Daimler is having a hard time reaching a deal over its 19% ownership in Chrysler because Cerberus' demands are unreasonable, but no word yet over what those demands are. The governor of Michigan is ratcheting up the political pressure on the Chrysler bailout. The Detroit Free Press reports that Jennifer Granholm says any banks that took TARP money from the government should be forced to make concessions if they hold any debt with Chrysler. Chrysler has nearly $7 billion in secured debts from Chase, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, and Morgan Stanley, who together got $70 billion in TARP money. You know, you take taxpayer money, you take the political baggage that goes along with it. Toyota is considering reorganizing its operations in North America. According to the Detroit News, in an effort to keep a closer eye on operations, sales and manufacturing would be brought under one executive. A formal decision will not be made until June when Akio Toyota takes over the company. Currently, Toyota sales and manufacturing operations report to managers in Japan. American motorcycle company Zero Motorcycles unveiled its all-electric, street-legal Zero S motorcycle yesterday. The bike weighs only 225 pounds or 102 kilograms and has a range of 60 miles, about 96 kilometers, and tops out at 60 miles an hour. The bike's powered by a lithium-ion battery pack and takes less than four hours to charge. The Zero S starts just below 10 grand, but it does qualify for federal tax credits for plug-in vehicles. The press previews start today at the New York International Auto Show. Here's some news from the Big Apple. Jeep is set to debut its redesigned 2011 Grand Cherokee. The off-road SUV features a new but familiar looking body and an upscale interior with lots of soft materials. Under the hood, it features a V6 from Chrysler's brand new Phoenix engine family. At 3.6 liters, it delivers 280 horsepower and is 11% more efficient than the outgoing six. A Hemi V8 is still available. The only transmission Jeep will offer is a five-speed automatic. Overall, the 2011 Grand Cherokee should be roomier, more stylish, and more efficient than today's version. Autoblog reports that undercover agents at Autospies.com captured a photo of Acura's upcoming ZDX crossover ahead of its reveal tomorrow. Not much else is known about this vehicle except it's designed to go after the BMW X6. And Mercedes premiered two versions of its updated S-Class, but surprisingly, they will not be shown in New York. The new S600 is the V12 version of the company's flagship sedan. It gets subtle styling tweaks and some added technology. More interesting, though, is the new S400 Hybrid. Mercedes claims it's the world's first production car with a lithium-ion battery pack. It features a 3.5-liter gas V6 and an electric motor that deliver a combined 295 horsepower. Mercedes also says it should be the most economic vehicle in its segment, allegedly delivering a combined fuel economy rating of 29 miles a gallon. Coming up next, even more news from the New York Show. Changing tires out here could be dangerous, but with these tires, I don't need to worry. Bridgestone. Jeff Gilbert from WWJ News Radio 950 is Skyping in from the New York show with the latest news. Jeff, what do you got for us? Well, the actual press previews of the New York Auto Show don't open until today. 
GM caused quite a stir by showing off a microcar concept a day early, something they think might actually work in a city like New York. If this reminds you of a Segway, well, that is what it is underneath. It's all part of a partnership between Segway and GM called Puma, Personal Urban Mobility and Accessibility. Now, this is just an engineering vehicle, not meant for big people like me, but I'll tell you, it was worth squeezing into. The turning is all by wire, so there's no actual linkage between the steering wheel and the wheels that are driving the machine. So because it's on two wheels and because it's balancing, we can turn in place, turn around and do a 180 in place. The New York Auto Show really gets into gear today, John, with both GM and Chrysler trying to show the world they have product, they are viable. GMC has the new Buick Terrain, a small SUV, and a very important product introduction for Chrysler, a new Grand Cherokee. Jeff, thanks for joining us via Skype, and you know, I can't wait to drive that Puma for myself. Hey, remember, tomorrow, automotive analyst Mary Ann Keller will be joining us live on AutoLine After Hours. She's one of the best analysts in the business and is not afraid to tell it like it is, just like the other two who will be on the show, PR veteran Jason Vines and Mr. Auto Extremist Peter DeLorenzo. That's tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern or 2400 hours Greenwich Mean Time. And that's it for the top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Visit our website for even more great content all week long. Auto Line Extra, Don's Journal, Podcasts, and even more. So click over and get the inside view at AutolineDetroit.tv.